Hey, we're, we're on, we're on. We're cooking, on. we're cooking. Tell you who else is cooking. <laughs> Chelsea. Stop it. Do you, do you do anything good last night? You watch a game? Do you know what? I actually thought, you know, I had a bit of a boring night, really. Mm. You know, not much happens, did it? Do you know what I mean? It was quite no, a quiet one. It was a quiet one. Quite a cold night, actually. Yeah. Oh, freezing cold. <laughs> really, really was. Um, listen, Chelsea against Everton. Just the six for us last night and the clean sheet and just a fall for Cole Palmer. So. Yeah, do you know what was interesting, mate, is I couldn't wait, first of all, to get in the room and talk to you today because, come on, the, we fucking love the, it. He actually budget. came very, very smart to today's recording session. Can't tell you why. <laughs> you nosy bastards. No, <laughs> I had to dress down just for you. Always mate. insult the viewers. Yeah, Leave yeah. Them. You, you got to play hardball with them. Leave them wanting more. It's just like chatting up a girl, really. Yeah, yeah. I love so, it. I absolutely yeah. love it. But yeah. do you know who I love more? Cole Palmer. What he did in the first half is he completed, mate. I don't know if you know about this. A perfect hat trick. Perfect hat trick. And then what he decided to do is he went, do you know what? That's not enough. I'm going to slap in a pen. Mm. Mm. This guy is so good. Absolutely <laughs> unreal, this boy is. I was at the game last night, so I'm nursing a little bit of a hangover. Nothing too bad. Let's speak about it because it was absolutely unreal. By the way, before we get into it, if you are new around here, please like the video right now. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And most importantly, head over to the big dog, Josh Aveste's channel, which is linked in the description. And make sure you are subscribed. Actually, if you were already subscribed, you would have seen Josh's post-match review last night, which was a banger. I watched it in bed. Pretty drunk, so I don't remember anything <laughs> you, you said. You do always watch my videos in bed, to be fair. I do. I do. <laughs> I do. Um, so what were you thinking then? I was at the game last night. You weren't there. I wasn't. But you were there in spirits. I was. Um, I was on the spirits. And <laughs> it was a good one, wasn't it? It was, do you know what, like... I was saying that I did think we'd win that game. You did. I, you know, Everton, what, you one did. win in 17 matches, you know what I mean? Mm. Sean Dyche, obviously nowhere near as good as Mauricio Pochettino. No one's saying he is. Do you know <laughs> I what mean, I mean? I mean, that is quite embarrassing that that's come out, isn't mm. it? It's not looking good, mate. What Do you regret saying that? No regrets. Mm. No regrets. Maybe you should. Mm. Yeah, no regrets. I still um, think Pochettino would be a better night out as well, to be fair. <sighs> He would after last night. He'd have <laughs> been pretty merry, wouldn't he? Um, so, starting lineup that we saw last night. Now, my main concern here was I really wanted to see Carnage Chukameka give him more minutes. Agreed. Okay, bearing in mind, this is my thoughts before the match. Obviously, once we fucking win 6-0, I'm not going to complain, am I? But before we knew that we were going to be running out 6-0 winners, I would have liked to have seen a Carnage Chukameka started. I also... Just want to give a little shout out to Cesar. Cesare. Cesare Casade, <laughs> right? Because Casade was doing well on loan at Leicester. He wasn't like emphatic, but he was popping up in big moments from winning games, from scoring goals from, from time to time. Wasn't a guaranteed first team starter, but was starting more matches than he wasn't. And they're at the top of the championship and, you know, looking like they're going to come back up. And we pull him off of that. We didn't pull him off. We pulled him off of the loan, you never know. You don't yeah, know what yeah, goes right. on. You don't know what's you, going on behind closed doors. You don't know what really goes don't. on. And, and and maybe that exchange explains the lack of game time because mm. he just, he's just been pulled off too he's much. He's been busy. He's been he busy. Has been he's busy. tired. Yeah. Maybe that's where the injuries keep coming from. Everyone's I know a lot off. of mine come from that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, obviously we brought him back off loan. Last night was sort of the opportunity. I thought if he's ever going to get a start, this is going to be it. Yeah. I don't think he's ever going to get a start this season unless it's like... Bournemouth on the final day or something like that. Um, but what did you think of the lineup when you saw it? Most notably, maybe the centre back pairing. We've been waiting for this in a weird way. Mm. Do you know what? They complement each other so well. And, and let's spend some time on this now. Thiago Silva was getting songs sung about him all all the second half. I think you were basically started one Mate, of those. It was, it non it him, was non-stop for Thiago <laughs> yeah, Silva yeah. in that second half. It was beautiful. Half. He yeah. deserves it. And do you know what? I think in a weird way, Trev is the perfect person to play alongside Thiago because he's got the pace to mm. make up for what Thiago Silva doesn't have. Mm. Do you know what? It's one of those ones where I think we would are you say really he's got the most him. pace? Out of, the out of all of the centre backs, yeah, I probably would. I think yeah. the Sassi is deceptively fast, but maybe not acceleration wise. Mm. Maybe you know when he gets a sort of head of steam, he's all right. But do you know what I mean? Like until then, I'm a bit worried about him. But Trev, mate, can we just say is he underrated? He's definitely very, very yeah. underrated in my opinion. Do you think there's a chance now they keep him? They should do. 
Like they really mm. should do. Like it is a no brainer because if we look, Thiago Silva's going to go. We accept that. We understand that. We know that father time's undefeated and eventually Thiago Silva is going to come to the end of his career at this sort of level. Mm. Bearing in mind saying that, I still think he could go to, you know, Italy, maybe even France and play right at the top of the division. But Agreed. in the Premier League, I understand that he's now coming towards the end. Could he do another season as a rotation option? Yeah, mm. I think Thiago Silva could, but I don't think he's going to want to do that. I think maybe a move back to Brazil, who knows? But what I do know is if Thiago Silva's going, yeah, we are definitely going to be looking to bring in a centre-back, aren't we? Yeah. And if Trevor Chalibur goes, we're... Oh, that was half me to say. But if Trevor <laughs> Chalibur goes, we're definitely, definitely going to be looking to bring in one, maybe two, right? Yeah. And when you look at the track record, okay, Fafana, he looked good. He's been out injured. But the Sassy, Badi Yashil, I'm not saying they're any worse, but can you definitively say they're better than Trevor Chalibur? Mm. No, you can't. You, you can't, can't, can and you? Do you, know, do you know the interesting thing? We were talking about flops of the season and, and obviously we'll get into that later on. But to say that we keep making these signs, we keep spending the amount of money that we're spending, sometimes it's better to have the players that you have mm. at your disposal. Like, why are we always trying to bank the money from these uh, academy players mm -hmm. and then trying to spend the money on players that aren't as good? <laughs> like, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense anymore. So, like, I'm, I'm going to be alongside you. And now that we've sold potentially our big, uh, biggest signing for the summer, mate, I don't know if you've heard about this. He's called Hotel. I, d I didn't even know we had him on the books. Yeah, there's um, two of them, isn't there? Two hotel. Mm. So first name two. They're like the hotel. old, you know, the Man United fullbacks. Yeah, Fabio yeah, yeah. and uh, Raphael. Yeah, yeah, two of them. Yeah, yeah, mm. exactly. So now that we've sold that amazing signing, I didn't even know we had him on the books. To be fair. Maybe we don't need to sell. Trip. He loves it, old Todd Bowley. He? He, he loves he a loophole. He loves it. Why don't you educate anyone that doesn't understand what you're talking about there? So we have uh, had a look at the the hotels that we have on site at Stamford Bridge. Yeah. We've got two of them. It was awful. They they're going to be a big miss to us. They're that gonna, we've had to sell them on. They're going to be. That you know what? They had a real impact for the football club as well. Mm. And I don't know if you've ever stayed in them. They're they're usually pretty good rooms. Mm. But we did obviously look. We had to sell them on. <laughs> To be able to meet the the sort of requirements to comply with FFP, it's a gutter. Any idea who we sold mm. them to? Do you know what? There must have been a few bidders. Yeah, there must have been. You'd a imagine few, there would have been. There must have been a few people interested. Hilton must have been interested. Mm. You know, all of the big ho hoteliers must have been interested. Mm. But I heard there was this company. What's it called? Blue Co. I've Blue never Co. heard of it. Blue Co. No, no, not heard of it. No. Any it's... idea who owns it? No, no idea actually. No, no. no. Don't worry about. Don't worry about ownership. Don't worry. Don't worry, don't we worry won't, Bill. What's when is the questions? Premier League ever worried about ownership? No, no, no. Don't worry about all that. What you should <laughs> worry about is the centre-back pairing. Thiago Silva, Trevor Chalabar. First game in fuck knows how long we haven't conceded a goal. I think, actually, we would go back to the match we watched together on the old live stream, the League Cup final, innit? That's the first night we ain't conceded that feels a goal like in since then. a lifetime ago, it, it doesn't it? It does feel like yeah. a very long time ago, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But we didn't concede a goal last night. Everton had a couple of chances early on, maybe, but they didn't really threaten that much. Um, I'm going to upset a lot of people now. They deserve to go down their fucking shit, Everton. Yeah, yeah. Their that's, shit. That's, that's why you can't go too crazy on the clean sheets, mate. You can't. We can't celebrate to the, the high hill. But for oh, that. no, we can. I mean, we will. We can. We, we will. We, we, yeah. we, we, no, we, we can. Will. But they're also shite, like better. So, yeah. fuck yeah. me, where have they pulled yeah. this geezer from? Listen, I'm not, shite. Look, I'm not saying we're better than Man City, Liverpool and Arsenal, but did any of them keep a clean sheet this weekend? That's what I want to know. Did I mean, they, did they? Well, I, I've looked and I couldn't see one. No, I couldn't see one. I couldn't see I one. I couldn't see one. I'm not, yeah. I'm not saying we're better. Mm. I'm just saying stats don't lie. Just saying we won our game. We won our game. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Man City won. They and and, and they I did. Mean, they did smash Luton. To be fair, I mean, it's smashed Luton. them, didn't it's, they? It's Luton. Yeah. How many? How many? How many goals did they actually win by? Oh, I mean, don't worry about the actual number. Man City, isn't it five ones? Yeah, so they won by yeah, four goals. We won yeah, by six. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying we're better than Man City. I'm just saying they won by four. We won by six. I so. mean, arguably, mate, we've got the better centre forward than Man City. Tell you, is better than Man City. <laughs> Cole Palmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this boy's gonna win the fucking golden boot. I've got I've had a little what I've had a little look, by the way, right? Three to one he is. Three to one now. With, he's three to one with the bookmakers to win the golden boot. What was he pre-season? Do you know what he was pre-season? Do you know the answer? I, I don't, but I'm gonna make Sank up. <laughs> okay. Because, why, why not? Yeah. Right. I will make something up for this answer. <laughs> Let me prove Sancho. Go on. I'm 5, ashamed. To one? I am ashamed to say that this bet was put on with Skybet. 
because I would never use Skybet now. Mm. I would only use Stakemate. Stakemate. This bet was put on before Stakemate's existence. That's true. So you can forgive me. But this little bet I've got here, which is still in play, by the way, was put on before a ball was kicked. Stop it. Nicholas Jackson, 40 to one. Now, if Nicholas Jackson, the guy who was <laughs> prolific for us in preseason, bought in to be our number nine starting striker, was forty to one, what would Cole Palmer have been? How, Eight to one, how many to one? beers had you had when you put on that bet? <sighs> Only three or four, I'd imagine. That's not true. Did you have an empty stomach? <laughs> <laughs> They were mega pints. <laughs> Mate, that is a that is a mental bet to have Jackson on there. I love the I love the confidence you had. Mm-hmm. I love it. But he that's scored, mental. I think it would have been more he than scored more than Kai Havertz this season. What uh, who's Kai Havertz, mate? Kai Havertz, who's played for Chelsea. Did he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Champions League winner. I don't hear that much about him, no. especially from Arsenal fans. No, I don't hear that much no. about him. Nicholas Jackson scored more goals than him. And obviously, Nicholas Jackson hasn't scored any from the penalty spot. So, you know, it is what it is. But let's not get bogged down in who he scored less than, who he scored more than, you know. I don't care. Maybe he has scored more than Rasmus Hoyland, who has bought him for like 70-odd million. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's, only, he's got two or three more than him, four, four or five more than him, I think it is. Maybe he has scored, what, nine more than Mason Mount has, who we sold out for 55 million. But... Yeah. It, and how much, money, how much money did he come in for? I can't remember. Nicholas Jackson? Yeah. Oh, 30 million, mate. 30 million. So, I yeah. mean, and, and Kai Havertz is definitely double Peanuts, the player. really. Yeah. Kai yeah. Havertz is definitely double the player. Oh, Jackson's. double the player. Double the fee, double the player. That's yeah, what you I get. mean, that's how you it works. You spend double the fee, you get double the player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mate, they Speaking are Speaking about spending themselves. big fees, <laughs> anyone else? This video has no structure whatsoever, yeah, yeah, does yeah, it? But yeah. I'm just, I'm gloating and I'm liking it. Yeah. Speaking of big fees... We had a conversation yesterday on the kickoff. Good video going to be coming out soon on the kickoff. Hasn't really aged that well from some of the suggestions that were put in there. Has aged very well from other suggestions that were put in there. We love Craig, don't we? We do. What a legend. He wanted to put Nicholas Jackson in the flop list. We were, do- we were doing uh, we were doing flop of the season. He's fucked up because kickoff. he could have chosen so many other Chelsea oh, players. He chose no. Nicholas Jackson. What was he thinking? No. He, to be fair to him, he didn't know the price tag. No. But even then, come on, no. sort it out. No. He wouldn't be no, in my not, top five. It, it for wasn't. Chelsea. It wasn't the worst shot. It wasn't the worst shot. Did did. Craig suggest anyone else for that uh, flop of the season list? I think he suggested a few. I think yeah. he suggested a few yeah. other was there, names. Was, was there a little Ecuadorian midfielder in there by any chance? Do you know what was so funny about that? So obviously we're talking about Caicedo here. I had prepped so many stats to absolutely rinse those Oh, boys. mate, you were, you you had his back. You <laughs> had was, Caicedo I was back. ready for that. I was going in with my sword and my shield. I was ready to fucking back Caicedo. And you Kaiseido. were ready to die on that I shield. I was ready you were to ready. die. Mate, mm-hmm. I will die for Caicedo. Mm-hmm. I will die for him. Honestly. Um, he deserves it, mate. Do you know what? Some of the stats, he's better than Rice and Rodri in mm. some stats. Mm. That tells and you what I'm going to do is when I clip this, I'll just clip out the bit where you say in some stats yeah, yeah, and yeah. just have a little camera zoom. Everyone, I think you said he's better than Marais and yeah, Rodri. So. Which is true, though. Viral. Um, true. Yeah, very true, very true. <laughs> he had an unbelievable game. Do you know what? It's one of those things, and we talked about this on the kickoff, didn't we? We basically said, in his position, it's quite easy to go under the radar, isn't it? Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, he doesn't get the assists. He doesn't get the goals. In fact, Rodri and Rice do get more goals and assists, but that's just because they're playing in arguably better teams. Mm-hmm. Caicedo does everything that you want in a player. And do you know what? He was imperious. He was winning the ball back. He was making very good passes yesterday. He was up and down the pitch. And I think... Driving forward with it. Like, you know, like... I used to say to people all the time, there was always the comparison made between Kante and Makaleli. And I used to say, listen, I get it, but they're so different. Like, Mm. Makaleli stayed. He he dominated that area. He didn't drive forward with the ball. He got rid of it straight away Mm. as soon as he won it. Kante used to drive with it. And that is what Caicedo was doing last night. Like, footwork-wise, like, I was looking at him so many times thinking, oh, he's going to give away the ball here. Just wriggles through. He was unreal last night, You're so he? right. We need, we do need the Matic role alongside him. Mm-hmm. You Remember we said that the other day, like, we, we totally do need that player. And I was just thinking then, I think Paulinho from Fulham might be the one, you know, that I'd go for mm. in that role. And then you could unlock Enzo and let him go up and down the pitch. But, mate, Caicedo, like, he does the job of two You know who could be good for the Matic role? Go on. Matic. Bring him back. Yeah. How yeah. old is he? Fucking... Get him on the old performance enhancers. Yeah. Roll back the clock. Yeah. What, the, uh, the 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 old puffers, the old inhalers? 
No one does that. No one today. does. No one does that. I've never heard of anyone doing that. I've never heard anyone in the northwest doing any of that no. stuff. No, 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 no. 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 It's going to be very interesting, actually. The sports scientists, when you know a certain manager does leave a certain club up in the northwest, oh, isn't it? Clop it. I mean, stop it. <laughs> um, honestly. <laughs> but talking of Liverpool, they did want Caicedo, didn't they? Maybe their yeah. title challenge wouldn't have fallen apart if they'd had him. Probably wouldn't have. Unluckily, we'll never know. <laughs> We never will know. <laughs> um, look, let's have a little chat about Cole Palmer. 29 goal involvements in 27 games. He's on for the golden boot. He's three to one to win it now. He's now joint top with Erling Haaland. Where has this come from? Did anyone, did anyone seriously think that when we signed Cole Palmer for 45 minutes, do you remember what you were thinking around the time? Because I do remember... I was sat there, summer's day, nice hot day. The news comes through, deadline day, in fact, I think it was. News comes through that we signed Cole Palmer for 45 million. And I thought, right, this could either be a very, very shrewd bit of business or this could go horrifically wrong. Because sometimes you can have a player that is just so elevated by the standard around them that when you drop them into a lesser standard, they're just not used to not having the quality of pass come to them and the, the, the player around them to be able to link up with. So I was very unsure on how it would go. One thing I did not think is that Cole Palmer, to quote Jacob on the kickoff, would be putting a cape on his back and driving this Chelsea team on this season. Did you see this coming at all? I didn't. Do you know what my first thought when we signed him was? Is fuck, we didn't get Elise. How bad is that? We really That's, wanted him, didn't we? Did, we? we did. And do you know what? Like in a weird way, we were going, we need kind of a right winger. Elise is the player that we, that we really look at. Even though he's injured, we're happy to deal with that because he's quality. And do you know what? He still is quality because mm. every other other club wants him. Man United want him, City want him, Liverpool want him. So fair enough that he's a, he's a player in high demand. But... The thing that you have to say, the recruitment guys have looked at the the Man City Academy. Obviously, Lavia was involved in the Man City Academy. And then you look at Cole Palmer. His record in the academy was an insane. He tore it up. Mm. And then obviously breaking into the Man City team. To get into the Man City team, you have to be half decent, don't you? And so to play the, even the games that he did was very good. I have to say, we've said it over and over again, mate, at the kickoff. And I was actually feeling a little bit sorry for him last night because I'm very sure... Pep Guardiola was sat home crying into his popcorn as he was watching that game because obviously mm. he watches the game with joy. He watches every single Chelsea game because we're the best club in the world. He's a big watcher of the channel as well, Pep. Yeah, mm. yeah, he loves us. Mm. I, and you know what? I heard he sent you a message the other day just said, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work. Yeah. Um, all the best. Really like the fight. He's been studying your cardio. We actually yeah. implement your cardio plan into the Man City training plan, performance plan. Mm. He, he's a really big watcher of you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's a good lad. So you should he's be proud of lad. yourself. But <laughs> I would love to know your opinion. Do you think that Cole Palmer would have done this at Man City this season? Because it's easy to go, oh, well, no, he wouldn't have had the game time. He wouldn't have had the opportunity. And look how well Foden's doing. And blah, blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But the warning signs were there when Pep sold him, man. Yeah. He was the man that came up trumps in the community shield for him, albeit they didn't win that one. And... Is it the Super Cup they call it now where yeah. he scored the header? Yeah. He he was already he, he was already ready, wasn't he? Do you know do you remember a couple of weeks ago Pochino said uh basically our game plan at the moment in moments in the crunch moments of the game is to give Cole Palmer the ball and just see what he does, mm. right? And at the time that worried me because you were sort of going, fucking hell, there's no other tactics. We don't have any other boys that can put the ball in the back of the net. If we're relying on him, what happens if he gets injured or whatever? And I'm going, shit, that's not a good thing. Mm. And in a weird way, after last night, that we, that shuts us all up. Do you know, we do just need to give the ball to Palmer. And to answer your question, Man City would never have done that. Mm. They would never have let Cole Palmer be the main man. And so I actually think Cole Palmer, I think, might have at the time when he'd made the move, be a little bit worried about it. Because he goes, oh, am I leaving Man City? I'm leaving the trophies. I'm going to a club that is a little bit of a basket case. How is my career going to go? Am I going to be able to get the stats? And I think what he's done is he's sort of stepped up a level mm. and he's proven so many people wrong. And I think by being that leading man, I think he's done something that he wouldn't have been able to do at Man City. Do you know what else I think has benefited him massively? Go on. A number nine with really, really good link-up play that he can, yeah. he, he can be alongside. And people think I'm bantering, like, listen... No, of course, I'm not. I'm not deluded to say that Nicholas Jackson's better than Erling Haaland, <laughs> but 
He's got better link-up play than Erling Haaland. And you see the link-up between Cole Palmer and Nicholas Jackson last night. Now, unfortunately, there was one sour note from last night that we are going to get onto, we are going to speak about. And Nicholas Jackson, in my opinion, needs very much a telling off there. However... The link-up play between the two of them was nice, man. We saw it for Cole Palmer's goals a couple of times. Nicholas Jackson get one assist last night or I two think assists? He did. I think he got one, but the one assist was brilliant, wasn't it? It was from oh, the nuts of assist. Cole Palmer. Like, from the nuts, I should say. Mm. Um, I have to say, that little move that he did where he did Braithwaite, went through, Jackson then got the layoff. It was it was quality. And we've been Disgusting. waiting for moments like that. Do you know what? In preseason, we saw Jackson doing that quite a lot. And mm. I haven't seen him doing that as much in games. But he was brilliant last mm. night, Jackson. And you that have to goal. rate it. The way he took it, like, to take that and then put it in, I thought Nicholas Jackson was really, really good there. He was getting out of these little tight spaces that, obviously, in the past, you know, start of his Chelsea career, that used to shock me. Now I just expect him to wriggle out of these spaces because yeah. Nicholas Jackson does very, very well there. I, I honestly think that Nicholas Jackson can go. I think the ceiling's very high for him. I think that, ironically, despite... For probably two thirds of the season, us constantly saying, you know, once we get a number nine, once we get a number nine, I and and this does worry me. I'm not going to get gassed up off of one win pat I am, but you know, it does worry me. But I think there's a chance that we don't go and sign a number nine now. Like mm. I think that the Poch and the club might look at it and might go, do you know what, Palmer and Jackson there, we might be all right. And then Kunku, I wouldn't agree with it. Even Kunku as well, if you throw him into the mix, do you know what's funny? We scored six goals last night, kept a clean sheet. One of our best uh, attacking displays, I suppose. I didn't think either winger were great. Noni Madawaki, no. I actually saw on the um, on a few of the player ratings on the on the match reports and that, Noni Madawaki scored pretty high. I, I thought Mudrick, and, and I think if you're being honest, you'd probably agree with this, pretty non-existent last night. Didn't really do anything. It was one of his worst games. And that's really hard to say because mm. I do have that post on my wall. And I looked at it last night and I, I had a tear in my eye mm. for the first time because mm. I just thought, what have you done, Mackay? But you know what though? Like, he didn't do nothing bad. He didn't. He just well, didn't he do did. nothing. He, d he, he did actually because there were a few touches that were misplaced and they gave Everton chances. They mm -hmm. basically, he had a really bad touch that basically put Everton through. They nearly scored a goal. And so, yeah, there were moments where I wasn't sure about him. But fucking hell, mate. For Mudrick has been so good in so many games recently. To have a bit of an off game in a, in a, in a match like this, a 6 you can let win. It go. We, let's not worry about that. I have to say, to go back to uh, to your Madawake point, I thought he had some really good runs. I thought he, he mm. was quite good on the ball yesterday. So I understand some of the ratings. To be yeah. fair. I'm not saying he had a bad game. I'm yeah. not saying he had a bad game. There was a few times when I thought that maybe um, he backed his ability to to run and beat a man a little bit too much when the ball could have been released a little bit quicker. Um, but ultimately, everything, everything comes down to Cole Palmer last night, man. I mean, we look at where we are in the Premier League table now, we're ninth. Um, let me get this up. We are ninth, but yeah. we're what one point behind West Ham. Yeah, I had we're uh, a point off. One point behind with two games in hand. I had someone in my comment section yesterday saying, "Why can't we get fifth? Mm. <laughs> well, what Spurs is it? Though? Quite 60, difficult games. Sixty, 60 points. Yeah. Spurs have got difficult games." There's one game in there where we can directly take the points off of them. Yeah. Say we did. Say we did beat Spurs. And I've always said I'm confident in beating Spurs in yeah. that match. Yeah. Then it goes down to seven points. Right. Hold on. Spurs played 32. Seven points with a game in hand. Say we win that game in hand. What's seven? Take away three. Four. That's four, four points. points. Four and points. then when Spurs have still got to play Arsenal yeah. and Man City as well as that, yeah. are you seriously telling me that that can't be... I just don't, I can't see a world in which they don't get like six points and six points would basically be enough for them to finish above us. Because they've got Burnley and Sheffield United, which have to, you have to say. Tough games. No, you have to say though, they are going to be fighting for their lives. They probably will still be in it at that yeah. point. So they're not, they're not gimmies, are they? So, uh, mate, I thought that was a little bit a step too far, but fucking hell, sixth is absolutely possible. I mean, mate, looking at it now. We're going to overtake West Ham, surely. Yeah. Um, Man United and Newcastle, they're the, they're the tougher ones. Well, we got a game in hand over Man United and we've got a 10 goal difference swing. Mm. As in, we've, we're have we 10 goals better off. Yeah. So that 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 does it. Newcastle is the one I'm worried about because they've got seven goals on us. Mm. But injury crisis, they're up and down, inconsistent as much as we are. We've got some tough games, so we're going to have to perform in the top six games that we've got. 
Yeah, I mean, do you know what? Like, my main thing with Chelsea, so obviously we've got the Man City game on Saturday. Keep your eyes peeled for the Man City preview. That's going to be coming out off the channel in the next couple of days. But it's the next three games, isn't it? You go mm. Arsenal away, Aston Villa away, Spurs at home. Let me ask you, right, minimum points expectation from the nine points available there. Minimum expectation for you. Four. Yeah, mine's four. Yeah. I think I think four. I think like, do you know what? Like, if we came out at that little run there with four, as in a draw, if we lost to Arsenal, I, you get it. I, 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 do you know what? I do get it, but like, obviously, with what's happening now and with how things are moving and how it's going, I actually genuinely don't think we should be going into that game being. You should never go into any game except in a loss. We should but, be aggressive. Yeah. yeah. I think we should be going into that game looking to win it. And I think maybe we come away with a draw. I wouldn't be surprised if Chelsea were to beat Arsenal, you know. I honestly wouldn't. Me but either. either way, if we were to come out of it with four points, then knowing we're going into the little run where we've got West Ham, Forest, Brighton, Bournemouth. Like, I'm looking at them games there. The West Ham game should have nothing on it, really. I feel like they're going to be going deep into Europe. Will they still have something to play for in the league? Yeah, but yeah. they're massively in it. They're and just they're up good. and down they're like a yo-yo. Yeah. They're not that good. The Nottingham Forest game has always been one that I've openly earmarked. I very much hope I'm wrong, obviously, but I've openly earmarked that game and said that's going to be one that I can definitely see us dropping points in. I just think they're going to be fighting for their lives. Out of the teams that are down there, when you've got a team that have... I mean, Callum hudson Odoi on one wing, Anthony Alanga, I think they've got the best chance of getting out of that. So I think they'll be fighting for their life. So I think it would be tough there. Brighton are going to have fuck all to play for. And, and then shit. They are shit, yeah, they aren't are shit. they? You like, have to just I've, acknowledge I've come that. They're, under crap. 6%. they're shit. Yeah, they are. They they're are. shit. They're going to drop out of the top 10. Yeah, you, you said that on the kickoff yeah. yesterday. So you reckon they might finish bottom half? I think they will, yeah. You Imagine look at, finishing bottom half. Well, well, you look, well yeah, how awful would that be? That's yeah, embarrassing. It's a joke. Well, you look at how good Fulham and Wolves are. Like, yeah. they could absolutely come back. Oh, Fulham? Mm. Do you, have you, do you remember the, <laughs> yeah, do you remember do. the film Goal? <laughs> when do. he goes, my dad saw my goal against Fulham. Yeah, yeah. Goal was a good film, man, it, wasn't it? I miss it. Best football film? I don't know. I'm a bit of a football factory. Yeah, but Football Factory is not actually football, is it? It's not. I mean, it's not Bend It Like Beckham, is it? Oh, oh. he's thrown a spanner in the works. <laughs> he's thrown a you spanner do love in that the film. works. Fucking great you do. film, You mate. do love that one. Great film. And... Jesminda, an absolute raw talent. You know, she had <laughs> she had she had a bit of a problem with the old scars on the knees. Do you remember him, Bennett? Yeah. Like Becky, yeah. she got really, really um, what's the word? She got a lot of anxiety about getting her legs out, mm. and you should never have anxiety to get your legs out, Jesminda. Beautiful legs. Um, <laughs> yeah, she was a she was a big David Beckham fan. Wasn't she, she was. She yeah, was. yeah. Bend it like Beckham is a good film. I'd still say goal though. I would say I'd goal still as well. say, I'd still say goal and goal two. Oh, Mike Bassett, Mike England, Bassett manager. England manager. Come on. Uh, for me, that is the best. Yeah. I'd say is. that was the best it one. It is. It's right up there. I'm just yeah. trying to think of it. Benson and Hedges. I tell you what was, a, what was a decent one, <laughs> but you know, it's American, so we won't go there. Um, she's the man. Okay. Soccer. Okay. Soccer. We don't like, we don't celebrate No, that. we cut that. Yeah, we, we don't celebrate soccer. No. We love every American fan, but we do not call it soccer. It's football. It's not soccer. Um, <laughs> any other good ones you can think of? No, the, the Mike Bassett one for me is my absolute mm. number one. Let's finish this up on the penalty incident. Oh, God. Do we have to talk about this? Is this the second time we've seen it this I think season? It's the or the third? I think, I it's, think the it's the third, isn't yeah. it? I think like, it might even be more than that, actually. It's a fucking joke, mate. It's pissing me off. Right, and I've you got a hit the nail it. on the head. Go on, go on. Yesterday, in the group chat... What did you say straight away? I said it's Mauricio Pochettino's fault. And it is. He, To be fair to him now, he seems like he's come out after the game and he's made it very clear to the boys. Did he come out? He, he came out after the game. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. It's a big, big moment. That is it a was big national moment. news. That is a big moment. Congratulations. <laughs> um, yeah. He, he came out and he said, we've got a designated penalty taker. It's Cole Palmer. And if anyone sort of wants to mess with that, they'll get taken off. Well, uh, do you know when would have been a good time to take them off? Yesterday, when they did yeah. try and mess with it. Yeah. Send the message out. Mate, you can't be fucking about like that. And it either shows one of two things, right? It either shows a complete lack of communication from the manager or a complete lack of respect for the manager from the players. I've got Neither a theory, is good. 
I've Go, got a theory. Hit me a bit. The theory is, is that these boys are on performance contracts. Performance which means, enhancers. Exactly. Mm. Which means they get bonuses for goals. They Bonu- also... Bonuses. Bonuses. Bonus. Bonus. Is. Okay. Okay. Sorry, let's just clarify that. Yep. Bonuses. Bonuses. <laughs> this has gone very, it's gone down a route, hasn't it? It's not immature. <laughs> yeah. It's not immature at all. I, I honestly do think they're incentivized. And, and I also think that people like Jackson are on, basically their oh, wage will go up if they're scoring a short of, of goals. a few quid, are they? No, but do you know, you say that though, but do you know what? Like if Jackson could get 20 grand more a week at the end of this season for scoring 15 goals, mm. he cares about scoring those penalties. So who else cares about Jackson scoring goals? You. Mr. 40 to 1 <laughs> top goal scorer, I bet. Yeah, 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 exactly. And yeah, you but wanted to take that it's, it's not on, man. Like, you have got a man on the pitch that does not miss penalties. You let that man take the penalties. And now, look, a couple of weeks ago, I don't think a golden boot was even in Cole Palmer's sight. I'm not saying he didn't have that sort of ambition, but really, when he was trailing behind Erling Haaland by six, seven goals or something like yeah, that, yeah. were we really thinking it? But let's be honest, um, we're not going to say Erling Haaland shit, are we? Uh, League two player, I would say. League two player, but yeah. you, decent little goal scorer. I mean, I've heard, you know. I've heard well, he scored goals would, in the past. Would you say Haaland is uh, poor man's Mark Viduka? I mean, you could make the argument. You could make you? an argument. You, you could make the argument. You we're could not going to do it. You could no, absolutely not. You could also no. make the argument that he's probably the best goal scorer in the world. Viduka or Haaland? V- Viduka and Haaland. Yeah, both. But either way, <laughs> I don't think Cole Palmer would have been looking at Erling Haaland and breaking that. I mean, we say Erling Haaland, pretty disrespectful to Ollie Watkins, Dominic Solanke, True. former Chelsea player. So yeah. I don't think he'd have been looking at that. Now, whether Cole Palmer's looking at it or not, I'm fucking looking at it. I want that golden boot. I do too. Because at the end of the season... It's the only trophy we're going to have. We're going to have a trophy. Don't you dare say it's that. A trophy, you, it? You're a joke. Mate, hey, we're going to win the FA Cup. If I don't know was, if you've heard. If it was up to me, I would get a fucking open top bus and parade that golden brew, yeah. uh, brew, boot through the Fulham Road, yeah. honestly. But we're also going to win the trophy, the, the one that Spurs keep winning. <sighs> What's you that? Heard the, about this trophy? Uh, the old... Trophy, the, the mid-season one. No, there's not. A, it's not the mid-season one. Mm. It's the trophy for the last Champions League place. We're going to win that because there is a trophy for that. I don't know. There if is, yeah. Their cabinet is actually full of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. highline yeah. trophy. Um, <laughs> do you think he'll? Do you, do you honestly think he'll win the Golden Boot? I think he's got a bloody good chance mm. to do it, hasn't he? You know, Haaland hasn't been performing that well recently. In fact, a lot of his goals were at the start of the season. I remember. Like, I don't. Oh, Haaland. He's got, yeah, he's shit. He's, he's shit. He's been found out. <laughs> He will clear? never ever. I don't score think he'll ever. Again. I don't think he'll score. ever score a goal again. No, I don't <laughs> think, he'll, think he'll ever outperform that uh, opening season. No, but if you look at no, wow, I think if you look at the form though, mm. Cole Palmer's in more form than Haaland is. Yeah, so way better. Let's put the let's put the money on now. We could win a load of money off that. Mm. And Cole Palmer's country actually qualifies for international tournaments. So. Oh. You're dirty. Fella came up to me from uh, Norway last night. Nice bloke. I had a chat with him. Um, another bloke came up to me, offered me a chicken balti pie last night. You know Thank who you, you are. Much. Yeah, you know who you are, <laughs> Mr. Chicken Balti Pie Offerer. Um, final thing, you are Mauricio Pochettino. Noni Madueke, Nicholas Jackson, whoever it may be, Raheem Sterling, if he's on the pitch, tries to take another penalty off of Cole Palmer. What do you do? Hooked. Hooked. Take him off straight away. Yeah. Is that, what would you do? Probably kill him. Probably. Is that too far? <laughs> no. Nah, I'm joking. I wouldn't kill anyone. Um, just just, <laughs> just baby Hulk. I'll just pull him off. Yeah, yeah. No, just pull him off straight yeah. away. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. Fair to enough. To relax them. And then I would tell him, you've got to be substituted <laughs> off the pitch. Nah, I'm joking. People, let us know your thoughts. Are you happy to see a Chelsea win last night? I know I was. I know I'm nursing a little bit of a hangover now, but I'm not feeling too bad. We are going to be recording the Man City preview, so make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that. Thank Josh once again by heading over to his channel. It's linked in the description. Subscribe so that you can see all his content, and I will see you all in the next one.